Sometimes you have to use the digital present to understand the digital future. The Global Digital Foundation, for instance, describes itself on its own website as a platform for dialogue between policymakers, stakeholders and scholars in support of evidence-based policy for the digital society. Well, Transform Talks can't pretend to be a policymaker or a stakeholder, and certainly not a scholar, but we did manage to get a dialogue with the Foundation's chair, John Higgins. We know that we want our AI to be safe and reliable. We know we want it to be secure. If it's appropriate, we know we want human intervention to happen, you know, to be enabled at the, at the right point. We know we want to use data that we've legally acquired and doesn't have loads of dodgy biases in it. So I think the sort of expectations that we have from AI, we're beginning to get a common set of uh, understanding about that around the world. Now we, what we then see is the ways of approaching that are different. So in Europe, we take a policy approach that's based on what we call this precautionary principle. If it could do some harm, we'd better put a regulation in place. Uh, and we also, we add on to that a sort of point of view that says, whether you believe this or not, the market operates better if you have a well understood regulatory environment. That's not the Anglo-American approach, which is more let the market have a go at it and then we'll fill the gaps with regulation afterwards in, if we identify market failures. But um, if, we, if we think about that sort of European approach, precautionary principle, so take those things I just talked about, reliability, safety and so on, create a regulatory environment so that businesses know that if they stay within those rules, then there'll be acceptance of their AI products and you know, they'll be safe and they can operate with that degree of business certainty that they want. You sound quite positive about it though. You sound like there's, yes, it's theoretical. Of course, we'll have to overcome the various challenges that arise, but we can do that. We can have practical solutions to these issues as they crop up. I, I am and I'm, I mean, yesterday we participated uh, here in Shanghai in an international AI a governance round table and I, it's, there's still a long way to go but I was encouraged for instance that standards around certain sorts of things like how do we define bias and how do we deal with uh, um, unwanted bias the standards are definitely beginning to um, harden you know they're they're becoming more solid so I, I, I do feel you know it's a funny thing but the way that people work together a set of concrete things are emerging out of that that I think will will serve our needs you know the, the beginnings of the framework i'm not saying it'll answer all the problems and i'm not saying that technology won't suddenly break through and that we, we might not find things that we think oh crikey we haven't catered for that but i am quite confident that that sort of common set of safeguards guardrails people refer to they're beginning to shape up and solidify it's interesting actually one particular area is jobs and people have talked about the impact of ai uh, on people's jobs or in, t in terms of whole genres of jobs yeah. and it's going to have an impact, it is having an impact and I was quite struck that on the foundation's website they refer back to the Silesian weavers yeah, yeah, and right. uh, the sort of mechanised looms yeah. and the impact of it. Well that led in time to a pretty important and lethal revolt by the workers in Silesia in the 1840s. It did. It did. Are you People sort of, died, well, didn't exactly, they? You know, exactly. Yeah, no, so indeed. Do you, do you, how do you, I guess, how do you ensure that the, the journey is a bit smoother than that as these changes and challenges arise for workers? Yeah, well, I think um, the impact on work is one of the big ways that society feels the impacts of technology, isn't it? Oh, my job's not the same as it used to be. And, uh, and as you say, it's, this has gone back many years. I'm really not sure that AI is going to be any different. Uh, you know, in the, in the sense that uh, this is just the latest set of technologies. Many people think that what AI is going to do is just enable us to be more efficient in the work we're doing or be more creative or do new things. I think time will tell, you know, will, will it displace a lot more jobs than other rounds of automation? Um, it remains to be seen. I think what societies have learned about um, and what governments have learned about how you deal with this, you, you know, make sure people are trained up to deal with the latest technologies, try and anticipate the job changes, so you're not left with 
thousands of people suddenly out of work because the factory's closed or something. Try and anticipate that and deal with it. And I think giving, um, giving a license, as it were, to the local authorities to try and think and anticipate in their, in their area is an important part of it as well. So we've got to keep on and to trying to anticipate and trying to equip our people so we don't get those massive uh, batches of unemployment, which do lead to though, you know, it's not, it's not great for people and they re will react badly to it. But there's no turning back though, is it? You there's can't no, put this absolutely. back in the bottle there's anyway. No, absolutely, so. and we've never been, and nor would we want to really, if you think about the fantastic advances that uh, technology has enabled us to achieve and AI will continue uh, to enable us to achieve. So we, we don't want to do that. What we've got to do is deal with it as best we can. And I think we're making good progress. So uh, what's your final front. message to the sort of doomsayers of the people who fear AI, who want to stop the clock? Look at all the benefits that it is delivering and work out how to take advantage of those benefits in a way that minimizes, if you like, any side effects that, but there will be some and we just have to cope with them.